The power supply is not only one of the most important parts in a PC, it is unfortunately one of the most overlooked. Although most enthusiasts who build their own systems understand its importance, the mainstream PC buyer generally does not. Some that do pay any mind seem concerned only with how many watts of power it's rated to put out, even though no practical way exists to verify those ratings, without regard to whether the power being produced is clean and stable or whether it is full of noise, spikes, and surges. The basic function of the power supply is to convert the electrical power available at the wall socket to that which the computer circuitry can use. The power supply in a conventional desktop system is designed to convert either 120 volts nominal 60 hertz AC alternating current or 240 volts nominal 50 hertz AC power into 3.3 volts, 5 volts, and 12 volts DC or direct current. Some power supplies require you to switch between the two input ranges, whereas others auto switch. Technically, the power supply in most PCs is described as a constant voltage switching power supply unit, which is defined as follows. Constant voltage means the power supply puts out the same voltage to the computer's internal components, no matter the voltage of AC current running it or the capacity or wattage of the power supply. Switching refers to the design and power regulation technique that most suppliers use. Compared to other types of power supplies, this design provides an efficient and inexpensive power source and generates a minimum amount of heat. It also maintains a small size and low price. The power supply unit normally supplies 3.3 volts, 5 volts, and 12 volts to the system. These voltages are often called rails, referring to the fact that although multiple wires are carrying a specific voltage, they are normally tied to a single rail or tap in the power supply unit. Multiple wires are used because if all the current were carried over a single wire, the wire and the terminals, connectors, and even the traces on the circuit board will all have to be extremely large and thick to handle the load. Instead, it is cheaper and more efficient to spread the load out among multiple smaller and thinner wires. The digital electronic components and circuits in the system, motherboard, adapter cards, and disk drive logic boards typically use the 3.3 volts or 5 volts. Power and the motors, disk drive motors and any fans use the 12 volt power. In addition, voltage regulators on the motherboard or in other components convert these standard voltages to others as necessary. You can think of each rail as a separate power circuit, kind of a power supply within the power supply. Normally, each rail is rated for a specified maximum amount of current in amperes. Because the extreme amount of 12 volt current required by newer CPU voltage regulators and high-end video cards can exceed the output of common 12 volt rails. Some power supply designs use multiple 12 volt rails. This means that essentially they have two or more separate 12 volt circuits internally with some wires topping off of one circuit and others topping off of another. Unfortunately, this can lead to power problems, especially if you fail to balance the loads on both rails or to ensure you don't exceed the load capacity on one or the other. In other words, it is far better to have a single 12 volt rail that can supply 40 amps than two 12 volt rails supplying 20 amps each because with the single rail you don't have to worry which connectors derive power from which rail and then try to ensure that you don't overload one or the other. Whereas, the 3.3 volts, 5 volts, and 12 volts rails are technically independent inside a power supply. Many cheaper designs have them sharing some circuitry, making them less independent than they should be. This manifests itself in voltage regulation problems in which a significant load on one rail causes a voltage drop on the others. Components such as processors and video cards can vary their power consumption greatly by the activity. Transitioning from sitting at a Windows desktop to loading a 3D game can cause both the processor and video card to more than double the draw on the 12 volt rail. On some cheaper power supplies, this can cause the voltages on the other rails to fall out of spec or drop greater than 5%, making the system crash. Better designed power supplies feature truly independent rails with tighter regulation in the 1% to 3% range.
The power supply must deliver a good steady supply of DC power so the system can operate properly. Devices that run on voltages other than these directly must then be indirectly powered through onboard voltage regulators which take the 5 volt or 12 volt from the power supply and convert that to the lower voltages required by various components. Processors also require a variety of voltages as low as 1.3 volt or less that are supplied by a sophisticated voltage regulator module or VRM that is built into or plugged into the motherboard or built into the processor. You will commonly find three or more different voltage regulator circuits on a modern motherboard. If you look at a specification sheet for a typical PC power supply, you can see that the supply generates not only 3.3 volts, 5 volts, and 12 volts but also negative 12 volts and possibly negative 5 volts. Although negative 12 volts and possibly negative 5 volts are supplied to the motherboard via the power supply connectors, the motherboard normally uses the 3.3 volts, 5 volts and 12 volts. If present, the negative 5 volts is simply routed to the ISA bus on pin B5 so any ISA cards can use it even though very few ever have. However, as an example, the analog data separator circuits found in older floppy controllers did use negative 5 volts. The motherboard logic typically doesn't use negative 12 volts either. However, in the past, it was used in some board designs for serial port or local area network or LAN circuits. The positive voltages seemingly power everything in the system, logic and motors. So what are the negative voltages used for? The answer is not much. In fact, Negative 5 volts was removed from the ATX 12 volt 1.3 and later specifications. The only reason it remained in most power supply designs for many years is that 5 volts was required on the ISA bus for full backward compatibility. Because modern PCs no longer include ISA slots, the negative 5 volt signal was deemed as no longer necessary. However, if you are installing a new power supply in a system with a older motherboard that incorporates ISA bus slots, you want a power supply that does include a negative 5 volt signal. Although older serial port circuits use plus or minus 12 volt outputs, today most run only on 3.3 volts or 5 volts. The main function of the 12 volt power is to run disk drive motors as well as the higher output processor voltage regulators in some of the newer boards. Usually, a large amount of 12 volt current is available from the power supply, especially in those designed for systems with a large number of drive bays such as in a tower configuration. Besides disk drive motors and newer CPU voltage regulators, the 12 volt supply is used by any cooling fans in the system, which, of course, should always be running. A single cooling fan can draw between 100 milliamps and 250 milliamps. However, most newer fans use the lower 100 milliamp figure. Note that although most fans in desktop systems run on 12 volts, portable systems can use fans that run on 5 volts or even 3.3 volts. Systems with modern form factors based on the ATX or BTX standards include another special signal. This feature, called PS on, can turn the power supply and thus the system on or off via software. It is sometimes known as the soft power feature. PS on is most evident when you use it with an operating system such as Windows that supports the advanced power management APM or advanced configuration and power interface or ACPI specification. When you shut down a Windows PC, Windows automatically turns off the computer after it completes the OS shutdown sequence. A system without this feature only displays a message that it's safe or ready for you to shut down the computer manually. In addition to supplying electrical power to run the system, the power supply ensures that the system does not run unless the voltages supplied are sufficient to operate the system properly. In other words, the power supply actually prevents the computer from starting up or operating until all the power supply voltages are within the power ranges. The power supply completes internal checks and tests before allowing the system to start. If the tests are successful, the power supply sends a special signal to the motherboard called power good. This signal must be continuously present for the system to run. Therefore, when the AC voltage dips and the power supply can't maintain outputs within regulation tolerance, the power good signal is withdrawn 
or goes low and forces the system to reset. The system does not restart until the power good signal returns. The power good signal, sometimes called power OK, is a plus 5 volt nominal active high signal with a variation from 2.4 volts through 6 volts generally being considered acceptable that is supplied to the motherboard when the power supply has passed its internal self-test and the output voltages has stabilized. This typically takes place anywhere from 100 milliseconds to 500 milliseconds after you turn on the power supply switch. The power supply then sends the power good signal to the motherboard where the processor timer chip that controls the reset line to the processor receives it. Power for the processor comes from a device called the voltage regulator module, which is built into most modern motherboards. This device senses the CPU voltage requirements, usually via sense pins on the processor, and calibrates itself to provide the proper voltage to run the CPU. The design of a VRM enables it to run on either a plus 5 volts or plus 12 volts for input power. Many have used 5 volts over the years, but starting in the year 2000, most converted to 12 volts because of the lower current requirements at that voltage. In addition, other devices might have already loaded the 5 volts, whereas only drive motors typically use the 12 volts prior to the year 2000. Whether the VRM on your board uses 5 volts or 12 volts depends on the particular motherboard or regulator design. Many modern voltage regulator ICs are designed to run on anything from a 4 volts to a 36 volt input, so it is up to the motherboard designer as to how they will be configured. To augment the supply of 12 volt power to the motherboard, Intel created a new ATX 12 volt power supply specification. This added a third power connector called the 12 volt connector, specifically to supply additional 12 volt power to the board. The 4 pin 12 volt power connector is specified for all power supplies conforming to the ATX 12 volt form factor and consists of a Molex Minifit Junior connector housing with female terminals. This connector has two 12 volt power pins each rated for 8 amps total using standard terminals or up to 11 amps using each HTS terminals. This allows up to 18 amps or more of additional 12 volts current to the motherboard for a total of 22 amps of 12 volts when combined with a 20 pin main connector. High-end motherboards often use multiple voltage regulators to supply power to the processor. To distribute the load among the additional voltage regulators, these boards may use two 4-pin 12V connectors. However, they are physically combined into a single 8-pin connector shell. This type of CPU power connector was first defined by the EPS 12V power supply specification version 1.6 released in the year 2000. Although this specification is intended for file servers, the increased power requirements for some higher power PC processors has caused this connector to appear on desktop PC motherboards supporting these processors. Power supplies have several specifications that define the input and output capabilities as well as their operational characteristics. This section defines and examines most of the common specifications related to power supplies. PC power supplies are of a switching rather than a linear design. The switching type of design uses a high-speed oscillator circuit to convert the higher wall socket AC voltage to the much lower DC voltage used to power the PC and PC components. Switching type power supplies are noted for being efficient in size, weight, and energy compared to the linear design, which uses a large internal transformer to generate various outputs. This type of transformer-based design is inefficient in at least three ways. The output voltage of the transformer linearly follows the input voltage, hence the name linear, so any fluctuations in the AC power going into the system can cause problems with the outputs. The high current level requirements of a PC system require the use of heavy wiring in the transformer. The 60Hz frequency of the AC power supplied from your building is difficult to filter out inside the power supply, requiring large and expensive filter capacitors and rectifiers. The switching supply, on the other hand, uses a switching circuit that chops up the incoming power at a relatively high frequency. This enables the use of high frequency transformers that are much smaller and lighter. Also, the higher frequency is much easier and cheaper to filter out at the output and the input voltage can vary widely. 
Input ranging from 90 volts to 125 volts still produces the proper output levels and many switching supplies can automatically adjust to 240 volts inputs. One characteristic of all switching type power supplies is that they do not run without a load. Therefore, you must have something such as a motherboard and hard drive plugged in and drawing power from the supply to work. If you simply have the power supply on a bench with nothing plugged into it, either the supply burns up or its protection circuitry shuts it down. Most power supplies are protected from no load operation and shut down automatically. Some of the cheapest supplies, however, lack the protection circuit and relay and can be destroyed after a few seconds of no load operation. A few power supplies have their own built-in load resistors so they can run even though there isn't a normal load such as a motherboard or hard disk plugged in. Some power supplies have minimum load requirements for both the 5V and 12V sides. According to IBM specifications for the 192W power supply used in the original 80, a minimum load of 7 amps was required at 5V and a minimum of 2.5 amps was required for 12V for the supply to work properly. As long as a motherboard was plugged into the power supply, the motherboard would draw sufficient 5V at all times to keep these circuits in the supply happy. However, 12V is typically used by motors and not motherboards, and the floppy or optical drive motors are usually off. Because floppy or optical drives don't present 12V load unless they are spinning, systems without a hard disk drive could have problems because there won't be enough load on the 12V circuit in the supply. To alleviate problems, when IBM used to ship the original 80 systems without a hard disk, it plugged the hard disk drive power cable into a large 5 ohm 50 watt sandbar resistor that was mounted in a small metal cage assembly where the drive would have been. The 80 case has screw holes on top of where the hard disk would go, specifically designed to mount this resistor cage. A system manufacturer should be able to provide you with the technical specifications of the power supplies it uses in its systems. This type of information can be found in the system's technical reference manual as well as on stickers attached directly to the power supply. Power supply manufacturers can also supply this data which is preferable if you can identify the manufacturer and contact it directly or via the web. The input specifications are listed as voltages and the output specifications are listed as amps at several voltage levels. You can convert amperage to wattage by using the following simple formula which is watts equal to volts by amps. When it comes to computers, one of the major factors in overall energy consumption is the efficiency of the power supply unit. In 2004, the Northwest Energy Efficient Alliance founded the ATA Plus program to encourage computer manufacturers to improve the energy efficiency of the machines by installing highly efficient power supplies. Ecos Consulting, which manages the program, tests and certifies power supplies as being 80% or higher in efficiency. To help offset the cost of producing more efficient designs, the program also pays incentives to manufacturers producing power supply units and systems that are certified. Systems with more efficient power supplies consume on average 15-30% to less power than the conventional designs. This can result in a significant energy and cost savings over the life of a system. In addition, the resulting lower heat output both improves system reliability and saves additional energy in cooling the system as well as the surrounding environment. The ATA Plus program currently has six levels of certification, from ATA Plus White to ATA Plus Titanium. Each level of certification signifies different minimum levels of efficiency which are measured at three different loads, 20%, 50%, and 100%. How is this efficiency determined and what is the overall effect? The power supply unit in a PC converts the high voltage AC wall current to 12 volts and lower DC voltages for use in the PC. Unfortunately, no power supply unit is 100% efficient, meaning that some of the power is lost or used up using the conversion and ends up being dissipated as heat. Conventional power supply units 
RO were normally about 70% efficient, which means that 30% of the energy drawn from the wall socket is wasted and ends up as heat.